Hello and welcome to the fourth of our four-part video series on Hitler and Nazi Germany. My name is Barbara and in this video we'll examine life in Nazi Germany, specifically the impact it had when it came to women, young people and Jews and the policies that the Nazis adopted towards different groups of people in society. Do remember that this is the fourth of a four-part video series where we examine Hitler's life and leadership in the first video, also who the Nazis were and the ideologies in our second video, the rise of Hitler and Nazi Germany as well as really important laws to be aware of in our third video and of course in this current video, how life was like in Nazi Germany. This video is really useful if you're studying this as part of your course or exams. So let's get started. Now, when considering life under Hitler, once Germany became a one-party state in July 1933, all information in the media was controlled and all propaganda was really centralised under the Nazis. Even the churches felt the pressure of the state to conform to Nazi ideology. There were regular and overt displays of mass conformity through rallies and pageants, which was just one method of emphasising the sense of a new national socialist community. Other mechanisms of control involved the arts, which stressed social realism with an emphasis on ordinary people and depicting community values together with ideas of the Aryan peasant. And do you remember Aryan means blonde hair, blue eyes. And this is a really specific group of people that Hitler believed were racially superior to other groups. And of course, the Nazi state really wanted to propagate their existence. Also, there was a lot of sport with obvious emphasis on teamwork and the glorification of physical strength. And of course, this is in line with Nazi Darwinist beliefs of the survival of the fittest. Also, organisations were created which successfully absorbed and built upon German tradition of associationism, such as DAF, which is the German Workers' Front, with various subdivisions and community schemes, such as Winter Life. All these mechanisms were designed to promote the idea of a strong and united community with a monolithic Weltanschauung, a worldview. Now, when it came to Nazis' policies on the youth, the educational system was redesigned to indoctrinate German youth with national socialist theories as well as the personality cult of Hitler. School culture was therefore altered to reflect authoritarian and nationalist principles. School children were asked to say Hail Hitler approximately 50 to 150 times every day. The swastika, pictures of Hitler and Nazi slogans were everywhere. By 1937, 97% of teachers were members of the National Socialist Teachers League and 66% had attended special training courses on Nazi ideology. New elite schools were also created. There were 21 Napolas, which were national political educational institutions, and 10 Adolf Hitler schools, which were intended to prepare the best of Germany's youth for future political leadership. They were based on principles of Hitler Youth, such as physical education, paramilitary activities, as well as political education. The Nazis also established the Hitler Jugend, which is the Hitler Youth, in 1926, and membership after 1939 became compulsory. Young people did not have a choice, they had to join Hitler Youth. Consequently, membership grew from a few hundred thousand young people to over 8 million young German people by 1939, rather, which was 95% of the total population age between 10 to 18 years. There were various organisations which were created for the young people in Germany. When it came to boys, there was the German Young People Organisation, which recruited people between 10 to 14 years old. There was also the Hitler Youth, which I've just mentioned, which recruited young boys aged 14 to 18. But women were also not excluded from this. So when it came to girls, there were the Young Maidens Association, which recruited young girls between 10 to 14 years old, and the German Maidens Association, which recruited young girls between 14 to 18 years old. Now, of course, Nazi policy towards women also had an impact on German women. So there was a deliberate attempt to control the lifestyles of women. Nazis believed that gender roles were immutable and in other words they were fixed because they believed gender roles were biologically determined. 
Also, they believe that a successful nation must have a healthy, growing population. And of course, a healthy, growing population needs lots of women's wombs. Feminist and emancipation developments were seen as subversive and illegal, and they were also portrayed as liberal and Jewish. Also, women had a key role in the building of the people's community. Now, it's really important to understand some of the policies and how this played out between 1933 when Hitler came to power all the way to the end of the Second World War in 1945. So there were a series of several laws and policies that were implemented which affected young people, women and of course Jews who we're going to look at shortly. So in 1933, there was a law for the reduction of unemployment which was passed. Also, 600 Reichsmarks of um, money was given as a loan to people who were married if they were unemployed. Civil service and medicine professions were closed off to women. So there was an active discouragement of women in 1933 from joining the civil service and the med medical professions. And there were no female members of parliament. In 1935, the following laws were passed. So there was a marriage law which required a certificate of fitness to marry. There were also blood protection laws which prevented mixed race marriages, in other words, marriage to people of different races. So for instance, marriage between someone who is deemed an Aryan German and a Jew person, they this was deemed illegal and also punishable. In 1936, women were banned from being judges and lawyers. Again, this was part of the Nazis' active discouragement of women entering the professional field so that they can stay at home, give birth to lots of babies and essentially create a really strong German and especially Aryan race of people. In 1937, the marriage loan was extended to women in work. In 1938, the marriage law was extended to the grounds for divorce. And between 1939 to 1945, with the war, the Second World War, came a radicalization of policies. So couples found cohabiting, in other words, living together without being married, when marriage had especially been forbidden, were sent to camps where some of them would die. Also, compulsory agricultural labor service was made for unmarried women who were over 25 years old, Women were also forced to register for work between 17 years of age and 45 years of age. Of course, this might strike you as interesting in contrast to the earlier laws, which prevented women from working in different professions. Do remember that the reason why they were forced to register between these ages is because a lot of men were out fighting as soldiers. So Germany needed a larger workforce and they needed the women. Now, we also need to understand Nazi racial policies. So Nazis aims were underpinned by the central theme of race. Jews in particular were seen as the hidden force behind communism and capitalism, which the Nazis portrayed as corrosive to German society. They were also seen as corrupting German genes. And as a result, they were seen as in many ways sidelined but also Hitler really wanted to do something to sideline them and also remove them from society. Now the Third Reich which Hitler oversaw was based on notions of national community, racial purity and expulsion of aliens. The term alien is really a catch-all phrase for people from outside of the Aryan race. Of course this includes primarily Jewish people but also Slavic people. There were also people of African descent who lived in Germany who also were seen as aliens and essentially people who were outside of the racial criteria that Hitler saw as pure, which is the Aryan race. In the 1930s, of course, the Jews did suffer extensively, particularly when Hitler came to power. So in 1932, there was the law for the restoration of the civil service, which removed Jews from jobs in the state. In 1933, there was a one day boycott of Jewish shops. And there was also the Reich entailed farm law, which banned Jews from owning farms. Also, clinics were set up to establish racial soundness under the law for compulsory sterilization. In 1935, there were the Nuremberg laws that were passed. There was the law for the protection of German blood as well as German honor. 
In 1937, Hitler made really fierce anti-Semitic speech at Nuremberg rally. In 1938, Anschluss resulted in an extra 150,000 Jews in Germany and 45,000 Austrian Jews emigrating, in other words, leaving the country. And a decree was then passed to register Jewish property valued at over 5,000 renten marks. And most crit critically, there was the Kristallnacht, which was the night of the broken glass, which happened in the same year in 1938. And as a result of this night, lots of synagogues and Jewish property was destroyed. And this was, of course, actively encouraged by the Nazis. In 1939, the Reich Central Office for Jewish Emigration was set up to promote emigration, in other words, to promote the leaving of Jews from Germany. And Hitler began referring at this point to the annihilation of the Jewish race at a Reichstag speech. So he saw the Jewish people as such a big problem that they needed what he called, and to quote, a final solution. And this final solution was their annihilation. In 1940, the gassing of the mentally ill began. So 70,000 people were murdered in just 12 months. In 1941, July was the month when this final solution was agreed upon and German Jews were ordered to wear the Yellow Star of David on their arms and in October, emigration, so leaving Germany, was actually banned. In 1942, a conference of senior Nazi officials agreed to use concentration camps in occupied Poland as areas to kill Jews in mass numbers. And between 1942 to 1945, the final solution was put into practice, causing the Holocaust, which was the mass slaughter of Jewish people in these concentration camps. And this, of course, was seen as a really dark and shameful part of German history, overseen by Hitler himself.